Kepler. Good morning, Matty. Good morning. Welcome back. Good to good to be back. Yeah. I left my my speaking ability somewhere else. I think you left it in the rum cake. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where the speaking abilities went. No comment. Do you, want to, do you want to introduce the rum cake? Uh, the rum cake is uh, from my mom. Uh, she is a great cook and uh, enjoys it. It's uh, her love language. And uh, so uh, Sunday I was over at the house uh, watching some football with my dad and my mom's baking away. And uh, so she's like, uh, come back tomorrow and pick it up. It's not finished yet. And so picked it up last night, all wrapped, cut, sliced. Ready to hand it's, out this it's morning. Good. It's amazing. Good, man. It's, good. it's been sampled and approved. <laughs> yes, it has. Uh, by the way, too. And uh, Matt, you're familiar with the uh, the Bible story, of the uh, prodigal son. Yes, yes. Right? He, uh, he, yeah, uh, took his dad's fortunes, uh, went out, squandered it all away, and then realized, you know, I had life better back at home. And he comes back home to uh, dad with his arms wide open, welcoming him back in. And we have returned our prodigal son to the show here, Jonathan Bodwell. Mr. Bodwell. He's back. Welcome. Yes, sir. The Medicare annual enrollment period is over. I'm back. (laughs) And uh, I promised myself that I was going to be off the sweets. But judging from the rum cake and the donuts (laughs) we have here, that starts tomorrow. There's no sugar in those products, right? I agree. No, they're all keto. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, uh, John, if you don't know, he's a Medicare specialist as well as working in the insurance industry. And... Uh, around open s- uh, enrollment season, he goes into the basement and doesn't come back out. He doesn't know what the sun's shining. He doesn't know if it's raining, snowing, the earth could have ended. He doesn't know. It was, uh, it was 80, 90 hours a week for a couple of months. It was great. We got to help a lot of people. Um, it was... Uh it was it was fun as always, like an accountant during tax season. It goes crazy for a while, and now it's uh, now it's a little more relaxing. Helped a lot of people, including my parents, including so, his you, and his yeah. parents are hilarious. <laughs> I've got to say, I I've got some stories they told about him. But, oh uh, no! Oh, wait a minute, they didn't tell me that. But he he slid me twenty dollars, so we won't be telling we won't be telling the stories. And he slid you a rum cake too. <laughs> but no, they uh, and I, I'm not surprised because every time I walked in their house, she's like, "Do you want something to eat? Can I get you something?" Would you <laughs> like a drink i've got freshness i've got i'm like okay yes yeah. that's awesome man well welcome back yes sir it's good to be back i've i've missed it a lot and our first guest also brought food with him pastor tim garino from the rescue mission tim good to see you again sir good and good to be back and thank you very much and and you helped our guys out a lot too they really appreciated it i did i had a lot of fun i was yeah. over at the rescue mission a couple of days i met some i just met some cool guys yeah yeah. Um, they were they were a lot of fun. I mean, one of the gentlemen who'd been a referee forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We talked for half hour, forty five minutes. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. it was just just about sports. I mean, it yeah. took it took a while to get into the business part and helping him with his <laughs> Medicare. But the main thing was just such you just have such such an amazing spirit there yeah mm-hmm. and such a sense of community and there's so many people from so many different backgrounds yeah and that's yeah. the neat thing like you said you that you can sit down and talk with anybody about anything there there's just, so many things just cool people yeah i mean just what a, what a what a great place you have well so, they they appreciated it was it was michelle that you brought with you yeah michelle yeah, came yeah the, you and michelle they really really appreciated your kindness and and the way you walked them through everything that was a blessing for well, those we, guys. It was it was more a blessing for us. Yeah, we had we had fun. And and for them, that, a lot of people don't walk them through that stuff because for them, that's all Greek. When they mm-hmm. look at that stuff, it's like whoa, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, what are you looking at here? And and they and you helped a lot out. A lot of them you helped a lot, so they I appreciate, appreciate it. that. What? Well, yeah. It's sort of like when my mechanic says, "Okay, now this is this is wrong, and this in the engine, this and that." I'm looking at him like, "This is Greek. I have <laughs> no idea what you're saying." Mm-hmm. And, but, I, and I took Greek, so I know. <laughs> You're the first person I've ever met who studied this. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, well, for what uh, my pastoral ministry uh, physician yeah. and, and thing, and, and uh, oh, I remember walking in and my professor. I'm like, "Hey, do I get to see if I just show up?" <laughs> <laughs> Most times, yes. Yeah. And I did get turn, one. <laughs> turn your work in. Oh, it was right? a nightmare. It was a nightmare. <laughs> and, and you brought donuts with you as well. Too. That's right. I brought donuts for you guys. Merry Christmas and thank they, you. I, yeah. Yeah. I will be having a, I will be having a donut. So yeah. as this segment is over, I'm hungry. Yeah. Rum, rum cake and donuts. Yeah. I'm hungry and I have no self control. Even though yesterday or two days ago, I told myself I'm done with sweets. That's it. Yeah. It was a pipe dream, baby. Not this yeah. time of the year. It's no. hard this time of oh, year. Oh no, no, January. Right. And I think Jason Barrett's coming in later today. Uh, this morning, oh, he may be bringing Tudor's biscuits. So, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> those are, and those are very, very good. And Colin's over there going, "Man, I just went. I yeah. just walked fifty thousand <laughs> steps at Disney." <laughs> 
and ate like crazy and came back here to try to shed a few pounds. It's not going to happen. No, no, not a uh, not a good place today yeah, to, yeah. to lose weight. And you mentioned doing it on January 1st. I've heard a comedian who's got a great routine on that, and he talks about, you know, the, the New Year's resolutions that yeah. you all make. And he said he joined a, a fitness club because he wanted to lose about $20 every month yeah. 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 because he never goes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I ran into a woman. I, I did a – I had a meeting with a woman, and I said, sat down and she was a few years ago and it was still gold's gym here in mm-hmm. town and she said she said i work at gold she said, i said i'm a member she said i've never seen you there she said you're you're not a member you're a donator <laughs> there you right. go yeah. yeah but but i do want to thank you for having yes. me on and all the stuff that's yeah. going on at the mission this time of the year we're very busy we have about um 109 people that we're sheltering right now between the three ministries how does that compare to a normal oh that's census um well that's pretty high for us. I mean, okay. uh, for a nonprofit uh, to, ha- to have that many, we're actually sheltering. Uh, we have s- almost 70 men staying with us. Um, What's a more typical number, Tim? Uh, typical number, well, before we brought on the, the Haven House and the Hope House, we were probably mid-50s. Mm-hmm. And so we're way up this year. And um, then we have about 24, 25 staying at the Haven House. That's the families, yeah. and that's full, that's that's a full house structure there, and we have uh, I think out of that 14, 15 kids that are in there, babies. Then up at Hope House, we're we're, we're pretty full. Uh, one of our ladies is having a baby, I think today or tomorrow up there. Mm-hmm. Also, I mean, <laughs> a real baby. They said <laughs> so you get to you get to add to the number. Yeah, add to the number. Yeah. So um, for us, I mean, as a nonprofit in this area that house that many people. Yeah. Um, compared to, uh, you know, of course, um, we're not talking nursing homes or anything like that, but mm-hmm. as a nonprofit housing people, um, that's a pretty high number because your average place around here that houses people, um, you know, maybe 14, 15. So it's amazing, and we want to thank all the people out there. And you saw all the guys when well, you came. And, and well, I saw stuff. the guys, but you also yeah. took me on a tour of the yeah. Haven House. Yeah, and it's just wow. Yeah, it's I just mean, amazing. It's... And, and people don't realize all that has taken place over there and then you got to see the recycling center and the store and all that stuff there's so much we do there in a day and then that's not counting with the berkeley springs hope house um the women's shelter up there what and and i was talking to a friend of mine on the way over here because i told him you were going to be on and and he's a huge fan of yours and a huge fan of the mission but one of the great things that i see there is how busy the place is that when you're in there during the day when you're walking around it's it's not people sitting around. It's nope. not people doing nothing. Nope. It's everybody is working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a part in the community. Everyone, yeah. everyone has a value to the, their their fellow people in the community. It's, yeah. it's. I mean, it's 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 amazing. The, and I want to say, I mean, coming out of a business world, I, I, I want to use the word culture. Yeah. I mean the the culture of it. The yeah. everybody wants to help. Everybody's everybody's like, okay, I'm done doing this. What mm-hmm. can I do next? Yeah. And there, I, I saw one, and, and I don't know their names, but I saw somebody working on some stuff, and then I saw somebody come out from another hallway saying, "Okay, what can I do to help?" Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, just it's the the sense of, I mean, the 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 pride, the yep. pride that the the, the the men there have because because Tim gives everybody a job and yeah. everybody earns their keep. Yeah, and and we do, and 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 going back to it, and you, you've coached, you've coached, you've done sports. Oh yeah, you know that. Every person matters on a team, Mm -hmm. you know, even uh, all the coaches, even to the equipment people, every person has a part. And if their parts missing, it can make things crazy. Mm -hmm. And we we everybody, according to their abilities, somehow are disabled. So we put them in. But everybody, I don't care what they're what they have. They they're able to contribute something. Mm -hmm. And I always struggle in society when when I sit in meetings and people say, well, they can't do this. They can't do that. Baloney, baloney. I, I just disagree with that so much um, that uh, it just frustrates me because everybody at the mission and everybody that's there has some kind of disability, whether it's mental or physical. Right. There's a dis or both, and then they, on top of that, they have substance issues and addictions. But they can be very productive if put in a situation to where they're able to do that, as you saw. And other people, when they come to the mission, they're blown away. Because they're expecting people just sitting around doing nothing all day. Well, and, it, and it's sort of the expectation. Yes. The expectation is yeah. you are going to be a member of this community. You're going yeah. to be mm-hmm. you're going to be a productive member of this community. Yeah. And giving them back the 
the I mean the dignity of it. Yeah. I mean it's not you're not going to sit here and be given something. Uh-huh. You're going to earn your keep. You are an important. You are important. Mm-hmm. You uh-huh. mean something. Oh, we, I think Jonathan's starting to be a preacher, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to get up on the pulpit here. Yeah. And and you know we I take a lot of hits for that because a lot of people will because uh, there's the opposite of well they can do nothing. Let's just let's just take care of them. And that whole mindset to me drives me crazy right. because it takes dignity away from people. It takes mm-hmm. value. You're, right. You're treating them. Uh, worse than animals in many ways because animals you expect something from an animal um and and if you just expect nothing from somebody that's what they're going to give you nothing i mean you know that in sports you Mm -hmm. keep raising the bar as you're teaching kids and you're teaching you know kids to do stuff you keep raising the bar for them to reach the next level to reach the Mm -hmm. next level we do the same thing and 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 we also allow for failure i mean people don't understand you got to allow for failure just like in sports do you allow for the failures but then you pick them back up again okay let's here we go we go start here we start yeah. here i mean it's just like when you came in to do the whole medicare stuff many of them were 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 were, were just shown this way and then you came in and opened up a whole other door to them that they didn't know they could get to and that's the same and that and that's the whole thing that i do i just come in and open up another door that nobody told them they could get to and right. they could go to the next level and the next level and when you do that with people with human beings they will they'll they'll come up they'll yeah. come up to that level well the mind doubt. the mind quits before the body does yeah, yes the, the mind wants the easy way out but the body's mm-hmm. capable of a lot more yeah. well you know when i was in the military they, they back in the days when the guys from vietnam trained me i i was uh, post vietnam the guys they taught the 60 40 mindset and mm-hmm. it's not taught today uh 60 40 means <laughs> when you are physically mentally drained um that's only 40 percent of what you can give you still have 60 more percent to give Mm -hmm. and and that mindset's not taught anymore so when you hit that you hit that wall and you notice in athletics they hit that wall i mean i used to do uh, marathons (laughs) not no more but i used to (laughs) you know stressing used to (laughs) yeah used to and and you know and that 12 mile 13 mile was my wall Mm -hmm. and you hit Mm -hmm. that wall mentally my body's saying you're it you're 100 percent no my body's actually saying if I only drained 40% of what 60, I still have 60% to go. So I was able to make it the next, you know, 12 or, or I mean, uh, I'm not even good at math, but the rest of the way to get to 26. And sometimes I ran 30 just, just to prove myself that I could get past the 26, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 and it, that's not taught anymore. Now it's taught, oh, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't overexert your don't. And it's just a different mindset. And, yeah. and see, at the mission, we teach the guys, no, 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 you're not even there yet. You're not even there yet. You can go to the next level. It's the extra gear. Yeah. Until you get into that extra gear in life in general, yeah. you're not fulfilling, you're not fulfilling your purpose. You're not living. What is, uh, what was the, the Steve Prefontaine quote? Yeah. Um, shoot, I can't even think of it right now. But if but he remembered do, that name. No, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a miracle in itself. That's, uh, that's a great movie, to, Pre, if you've do, never seen the movie. Do, it's something way. basically to do less than your best is yeah. to sacrifice the gift. Yeah. yeah. If you're yeah. not pushing yourself to go farther, yeah. if you're not pushing yourself to be to be the best you can, yeah. you're you're not living. You're not yeah. you're not fu- you're not fulfilling your destiny. You're not living up to your yeah expectations i mean you're and i uh, highly live recommend up the, to your live up to your my mother used to say every day to me live up to your potential yeah and it took me a long time to figure that out yeah. and i mean i try to do that every day and a lot of days you fall short obviously <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. but the days you don't and then you keep going and then you go past where you believe you can yeah. that's when you're succeeding and when you can teach others to do that that's yeah. amazing well and, and and again it's the mindset that you, you can fail. I always tell people, fail. So what? That's what we're here to do. We change gears and we step mm-hmm. back up and do it again. And, you know, I was in a meeting the other day. A lot of people, I, when I walk into meetings, they don't know who I am, which is good because I, I don't wear a suit and tie. So they don't, they say, Pastor Tim, they, they, in their mind, they're expecting the guy walking in with suit and tie. So I was in this meeting and, and this one person said, yeah, you don't want to go to the mission. They make you work. And I'm sitting there, and, everybody, <laughs> and everybody's looking at me, and I'm, I'm not saying nothing. Could I let this person continue to talk? And and it was total opposite of what we're just talking about here. Huh. Oh, they make them do this, they make them. Oh, no, I don't make anybody do anything. What I tell them is, you can do this stuff. You you've been told you're no good. I mean, we you see the average age at, oh, at the yeah. mission. I mean, it's up there. It's not. We're not talking about. I mean, no. we have a lot of young people, but people with walkers, people with all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. And yet, when you tell them they can do something and they do it, and the light comes on and they go, "Wow, I can do more." And then before you know it, they're doing all kinds of stuff that they were told 
they couldn't do. And mm-hmm. I'm going, see, stop listening to people who tell you you can't do something right. or, 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 you know, uh, you're disabled. Yeah, I, I'm disabled too, according to the military. I'm disabled. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. so, so, I mean, it, 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 it's just that whole mindset drives me crazy. And, and Tim, that, that mindset yeah. to me has to then come into those who are dealing with addictions and yes. other things. That yeah. when they can see, yeah. I can overcome, I can do more in these areas, yeah. that when you're talking with them about, you know, you don't need that drink or that drug or whatever yeah. that thing may be. Well, they realize, you know, I can do that too. Yeah. Well, look at Lenny, a perfect yeah. example. When he, when he, when you started with him, when he came to us, he couldn't even speak. Mm-hmm. You couldn't understand a word he said. Literally, he couldn't. And now look at him. He's saying mm-hmm. full sentences. <laughs> I can understand what he's saying. Yeah. He, he now he can. He. I mean, it's amazing how far he's come. Mm-hmm. Even his uh, uh, medical worker has spent time with. Him. She's she's amazed. She's like, wow. That, you know. And and but again, that's you're pouring into somebody who was told you're deaf and you're dumb and you can't do any of that stuff and then he was abused and treated like an animal we brought him out of that and mm. now look at him <laughs> i mean anybody yeah. who knows lenny they love him yeah. i mean and the guy is not only so productive i mean this mm. guy uh has done i mean he's and now he's speaking yeah. and he's doing all kinds of stuff he's learning i mean and and, and, and his impact yeah uh, we, we we had a chance my wife and i to uh take him over to a chick-fil-a one day yeah. and and had a little breakfast and the number of workers and others who came through that recognized yeah, lenny they, they the, and they're him. like, hey, Lenny. Yeah, and, and they love him. And, yeah, it was and, awesome. And, and the guy's built like a horse. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, I, and the, I mean, one of the hardest workers you're ever going to meet. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. he can he can lift the thousand pound uh, bales that we have. I mean, this guy's built like a horse. Yeah. But that's the thing. It goes back to that 60 40 mentality mm. that I was taught. And so when I come in and somebody says to me, um, and we have 70% of our guys are veterans. You've met a right. lot of our vets. Oh, yeah. And, and, and a lot of our vets will come to me and I'll say, whoa, time out, guys. You're veterans, man. No, 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 no. No, no, no. We're not done. We took an oath, an oath that we, we carry until we die and we serve. And those guys come alive again and they serve mm-hmm. and they do all kinds of stuff. In fact, some of them are our guys that fix stuff and do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. We get them in the kitchen. They start cooking and, man, they can cook good. I oh, mean, yeah. they come alive. And it's, it's, it's that kind of ministry that we do. And it, like I said, uh, and now we're doing it with the ladies. We're doing it with the families. You see the families coming together. I got a couple questions for yeah. you, Tim. If you can rattle off some answers here from Faith Hall. Does the Hope House take non-perishable food donations? Non-perishable. Help me. Oh, you mean like, like fruit? Can- fruit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, non-perishable would be None. stuff that doesn't spoil. I'm sorry. Yeah. Non-perishable would be like uh, boxes of food. And Canned food. Things. Yeah. We, we don't have a lot of room up there at the Hope House. It's very small. So we kind of take the meals in during the day uh, for enough just for that day because we don't have – it's really tiny. Is it better to donate money? Yeah, It's better to donate the money, yeah. Go online, donate the money so we can get the meals, bring it. We have no kitchen up there. We have no facility, no storage. It's real small. Trust me. Uh, if you uh, Faith, if you ever get a chance, come up there. Uh, it's real small. So um, where, is it, where is it located, Tim? It's located 47 Union Street, Berkeley Springs, mm-hmm. right there in that parking lot, right next to the refugee church. They're, we're renting that facility. It's real small. If you've been up there, um, the, we don't have the facilities. But I appreciate that. The, donate the money and go online, martinsburgunionrescuemission.com. Hit the donate button. You could donate uh, online. That can help us get those okay, meals. Next, from Ann Rose, you were talking about it, giving everybody a uh, responsibility to job at the mission. She said, you can't require someone to work in exchange for something that is not money. So do you pay the people who sleep in the shelter? No, we don't pay anybody. It, it, it's it's what we have when we're talking about working there. It's a, we're a work there with work therapy mission. Having the men sit around, they don't just work. I know the philosophy is they work to pay back what they what they're getting. Mm-hmm. No, they're we're, they're working because they're men. They're created in the image of God. They're people. We put them to, we put them to work because sitting around all day. There's like 68, almost 70 men. You don't have them sitting around. Um, it gives. It's a work therapy type program. It gets them back in. Many of our men, we helped 152 men this year get full time jobs mm-hmm. by working at one of the six stations or five stations we have. They can use that on their resume and go out and get jobs in the community. So that's why they do what they do there. No, we don't pay our guys for working there. We do have some guys that have come up through our program. I think there's six or seven now that are on staff full time very good uh and uh there was a i don't know that i can find it right away here but uh i'll, I'll come back to it later on if i can it was oh here it is uh from damon wright i do agree with pastor tim except we can't just find our value in what we do many disabled or with special needs family members would find value in them because they are alive and they love them 
that was in regards to finding value in the work that you do? It, yeah, I mean, when I say find value in the work they do, they find value, um, you know, it just goes back to the Old Testament when um, God took them out of the garden when they messed up and said the man's going to tilt the ground and the woman's going to bear children, all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it's a redemption. Um, we, yes, we find our value in our relationship with Jesus Christ, and we teach that and that because of the God who created us. But God created us in a way that we're, cre that we're also creative. And, and that's why when you help people with their time, talent, and treasure, which we do, that's our, that's our goal is to help equip, empower, and educate. So when you help somebody find that in themselves, whether it's through their work, through their ministry, through their, through their talent, it, they become alive again and they feel value. They feel dignity. They feel worth. They feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. So Damien's right. I don't disagree with what he's saying. It's just that we find our, our, our value in our relationship with the Lord, but the Lord also created us um, in, in his image and he is a creative God and we're creative beings so when you put people to work you can help them find their time talent and treasures it's amazing how they come to life and then they contribute many of our people end up helping each other there they mentor one another they give back by mentoring others as others are coming in for the first time off the streets they come alongside guys and they mentor them to help them get off of the drugs get them plugged into the aa meetings to the recovery meetings all that mm -hmm. stuff so you see that happening no uh, damien that's a good comment appreciate that um but that's what we we come from in that perspective and uh lastly uh, i want to make sure because uh, mm -hmm. uh there's a person on our facebook page with the comments ann rose who uh seems to have some concerns about what you're doing there so i want to give you a chance to further explain she says mm -hmm. so you require them to work or else they cannot sleep at the mission at no the shelter no nobody nobody does that and um uh what we do is uh everybody's uh uh, they come out they all are involved in some way or another we do have a few guys that are with us that um, can't do anything because of their medical disability but they've been with us for a while uh, where we work with them we're not a nursing home we're not uh, assisted living and this is where people get us mixed up um, people have dropped people off at our door that need nursing assistance and physical uh, assistance we can't do that. We can't carry somebody into the shower and help them get showered, even though we have uh, disability showers and all that stuff. Um, we're not that. We, I don't. I'm, nobody on staff. I have 14 staff spread out throughout three residential programs. Okay, 24/7. And people get us mixed up with nursing homes. We're not a nursing home. Mm -hmm. We're not assisted living. So please, that's that's that mindset. Well, so no, then that person stays with us. We just had a gentleman that stayed with us for 32 days who absolutely, he did absolutely nothing. But physically, he couldn't do absolutely nothing. We helped him get into an assisted living facility. We're not a fit, uh, and this, when I first came, we had to clean up a lot of stuff because people were dumping people at our door that they didn't want to take care of anymore, that the families didn't want to take care of anymore, that, the, um, well, I don't want to take care of him because I got to change his bag. Every well, we can't do that. We're not, we're, we're not qualified to change somebody's bag. We're not qualified to wipe somebody's butt. Mm -hmm. We're not qualified to do any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And people will drop people at our door like that. No, we don't throw them out on the street. We take them in, but we move them along to the facility that they should be at, mm -hmm. not the rescue mission. Everybody thinks the rescue mission. I, I always say to them, well, you're the rescue mission. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You know, w I don't have doctors on staff. I don't have nurses on staff. I don't have any of that stuff. And when people do that, Again, they're discarding someone as though they're trash, okay? So uh, we don't treat people as trash, okay? We don't do that. We treat them as human beings. But at the same time, we don't keep somebody that can't get the help that they need somewhere else. We move them along to, to a place that they can get that proper help. And what can we do to help you out for the Christmas season here, Tim? Sure. You can go online right now with all the expenses that we've occurred with all the different ministries. You can go online and hit the donate button um, at the rest, Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission com. Hit the donate button. You can donate today. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate everything you guys have done. Uh, appreciate the community here. It's a very giving and, and a blessed community. Appreciate everything uh, that we do there and you know come by come by and visit you can visit the guys we're transparent we give you a tour you get to meet everybody we don't hold nobody back uh, come on by anytime uh, love to have you come on by and visit 
hey, there's value in work. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. And it, yeah. And it, just, just to FDR touch on, had a huge program during the Depression where he hired people to pick up trash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You exactly. know, no, nobody, nobody's too good for a job. Yeah. Well, and the people are valued no matter what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it helps them to value themselves. Yeah. Being productive mm -hmm. helps people value themselves. And when they feel a part of something bigger than themselves, uh, and they're able to give back. They're able to give back. This is what people are missing. People want to contribute themselves, and they give back. I mean, our guys step up and help other people coming through the door, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And that, and you've seen it how they oh, yeah. how they come around others that are hurting, and they and they lift mm -hmm. them up. And that's that's such a key mindset there. And I know, I mean, like I said, I take a lot of hits for mm -hmm. that mindset. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, you come to the mission, you see what goes on. We don't hide anything. It's transparent. You can walk in. You can meet the guys. You can sit down and talk with them. Um, it's very successful. Very successful. Yeah. They're okay. excited if, to work. They're excited yeah. to be productive. We're at the point productive. where we're having problems because we ask people to work, yeah. then we have <laughs> lost an entire generation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's the bottom line there. Yeah. Tim, again, how do people yeah. donate to the mission? Uh, just go to MarsburyUnionRescueMission.com, hit the uh, donate button, uh, or you could write a check, send it to the mission, or call me up. I'll come get it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you again, sir. Good. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas Merry to you guys, Christmas. and Happy New Year to you guys. <laughs>